Here we go. Let's make it a good day. We do it our own way. Let's make it a good day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah, yeah. And good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Jason Show. I'm Jace. I should say hello to Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Keep It Simple today. And our friends in Wisconsin and Seattle. Like I said, I'm Jace. Uh, still here at home. Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But please welcome my sidekick sister from another Mr. McDowell's Employee of the Month, Kendall Mark. McDowell. Never heard of it. Thank you. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. We're going to have fun, as I said, uh, a little bit later. But... Uh, Kendall's going to kick off the hot dish, and we unfortunately have to start with some sad news. Uh, take it away, my dear friend. Yeah, unfortunately, an update this morning regarding beloved Minnesota comedian Louis Anderson. Louis has died, the AP confirming the news just a half an hour ago. Louis was a stand-up icon born right here in St. Paul and appeared on Coming to America, was the host of Family Feud, and won an Emmy for his performance in the series Baskets, among many other projects. He went to the hospital earlier this week after undergoing treatment for cancer, and he was just 68 years old. Uh, Jason, I know that Louie meant so much to you as well as so many other people, and you just have so many memories that you'd like to share. I do. You know, um, I'm going to try to get through this. Jeff, our executive producer, called me um, about 10 minutes ago. I, I was getting ready, and I knew that he was in the hospital. We were preparing to do a story this morning. Uh, about a tweet that fellow comedian Polly Shore had sent out that said that um, Polly had went to a, a Las Vegas hospital to say his goodbyes. I read that last night. So we were going to do that story, and I was going to come on here and and ask everybody to keep Louie, our buddy Louie, and, and uh, their thoughts and prayers. But sadly, um, I, I was looking down at the graphic, and I can't believe that um, we had that graphic that said that Louie died. So I'm going to try to get through this. But as Kendall said, he meant a lot to me. He meant a lot to Minnesotans. Uh, he meant a lot to the comedy world. Um, here's a little video of one of Louie's many appearances on our show. And if you've ever visited our studio, um, the first thing that you're greeted with when you enter our studio is actually a picture of Louie um, from, I believe, this appearance or one of his first appearances on our show. And that's not by accident. Because, and I've, I said this to Louie, I tried to show appreciation to him every time he was on the show because I was so appreciative. Uh, and this is just an example of what a good guy Louie always was. You know, when you do a show like this, it's really hard to get people to take it seriously, uh, especially stars. They're like, Jason who? Kendall who? Fox 9? What is this? It's a local show. And you never had to do that with Louie. Um, we called Louis whenever, and we said, hey, can you do this? Can you do X, Y, and Z? And Louis was always there. He always came from a place of yes. And that's how he was, not just with us, not just with our show, not just with me. But um, I quickly read some tweets. That's how he was with everyone. Um, that's how he was in the comedy, uh, in the, in the comedy community. Um, he was beloved. You, you would be hard-pressed to find a single person that worked with Louie that had a bad thing to say about him. I remember when Arsenio Hall was a, a guest on our show, and during the commercial break, we, we kind of kept talking, and I mentioned Louie, and, and Arsenio just said, Louie's the best. Louie is uh, what he seemed to be, and we can back that up. The crew can back that up. What you saw on camera was exactly what was in his heart. Um, we have a couple clips to play, and the first one speaks of his heart and the power of laughter, which he gave to so many of us. Take a look at this. It doesn't the joy come from the adrenaline, and this sounds rather woo-woo. It comes from the adrenaline of making somebody laugh. It's very exactly. simple, but what a joy that is. Yes, because you know when someone laughs, they cannot think about any troubles. Mm. Yeah. You're at, yeah. yeah. There's, and that's there's, a gift. There's... There's a relief. There's a relief of the stress. There's a rele relief of the tension. There's a relief of, you know, of what people go through. Mm, wow. And that's really the gift, Kendall, that he gave all of us. It was a relief. It, 
he gave a relief, he gave peace, he gave enjoyment. It's really easy to um, it's really easy to write off entertainers and say, oh, they're the stars. Why do people get so upset when stars die? It's because of the connection uh, that you have with them. Maybe it's a music star like Meatloaf, which we're going to get to later. Maybe a music star has provided a song in a time of need for Louis. Maybe he provided and he did a laugh when we needed it. And boy, oh boy, and I really want to cuss right now, but... <laughs> We are living in a world where we really need more Louis, and just when we need them the most. Um, oh, God, I said I was going to try to do this. Anyway, let's go to another clip, because one of the things that I loved about Louis was uh, he was a guest on Johnny Carson. You know how I am with Carson. And uh, he told a great story to us about how an appearance on Carson uh, literally changed his life. Take a look at this. I wish I, w I was such a fool of myself young entertainer. I didn't even know how lucky I was, uh, but I did uh, love him so much. I mean, you know, my goal was to make him slap the desk. Yeah. That was my thing, if he would slap the yes. desk. I remember the joke that he slapped the desk on. Can you, do you remember? Said, Can you tell I it? did a joke. It's kind of inappropriate, but I'll do it. Um, <laughs> I did a joke about the Fat Olympics. I go, you know, uh, pole vault. I drove that sucker into the ground. I did, I did a good thing. I, I straightened up the uneven parallel bars. You know the joke, right? But the joke, the joke where... It was where about he, you, so it made yes, it safe. But yeah. with the joke he slapped the desk on is I go, broad jump, killed her. <laughs> and that was Louie. You can hear... <laughs> Talk about laughter. I always love hearing executive producer Jeff laugh in the background. I know you love that too, Kendall. And I, God, I miss our audience too. But um, he had the audience, and he was so nice. I, um, whenever he would come on our show, and I, uh, he would always say, uh, he would greet all the audience members. They all wanted a picture with him. And this one time, he was taking so many pictures, and we had to come back. We were coming back from commercial, and we had to tell him, Louie, we have more show to do. We have more show to do. You, can you get, you know, and he stayed, and he took a picture with whomever um, wanted a picture with him, and, and that's just who he is. I, I say this a thousand times. Uh, you can always tell with, with stars, TV, music, when they come to the studio, what's in their heart, what's in it, it would mm -hmm. be their integrity by how they treat the crew, um, how they treat the behind-the-scenes folks. And Louis always treated everybody, from Jeff to the, the security guard that greets you. They, he treated everyone with respect. So that's why um, that photo in our studio will always be there. Mm -hmm. The first person you will always see when you come in our studio will be Louis. So I'm really sorry. I, I really promised I was going to try to keep it together. But this one, you know, Betty White, and we're going to talk about meatloaf. But to be very honest with you, this, 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 this one really hurts the heart. Kendall? Yeah. Close to home. Well, that was a beautiful tribute, Jason. Thank you. I think from all of us too, to Louis' family, friends, everyone, we are thinking of you, sending you lots of love this morning. We'll be right back. This is season four, but it's like a it's like a double season. I don't we don't there's seven episodes coming yeah. out tomorrow. Right. So we usually do ten episodes per season, but uh, we knew this was gonna be the last season and we had more story to tell than just ten episodes, so it's gonna be fourteen episodes, but then Netflix thought, well, let's split it up seven and seven. And so the first seven are gonna be on this Friday, and then the second seven will be on at a date yet announced, but it will be kind of soon. I what I'm trying to figure out is, did we get bonus episodes or did we get cheated? That's just it. It's the, well, I'll tell you who got cheated. It's the people that were looking for season five rates. I see. So we got we got we got 14 oh, episodes of season four rates. <laughs> you know, it's, these people at Netflix, they're smart people. You didn't get four you know. and a half. No. They just raised the prices on the damn thing. Yeah, no. Uh, it, it, we're extremely thrilled with anything and everything to do with Netflix and the show, and uh, I, I hope you guys are excited by what, how the plane lands as as we are. I am excited about it. That's for sure. I can't speak for everyone. Uh and welcome back to Little Late Night Rewind. Jason Bateman talking to Jimmy Kimmel about uh, what dropped while we were all sleeping. Part one, 
of the final season of Ozark. Are you, uh, Kendall, I can't remember. Do you watch Ozark? I don't. And then every time you talk about it, I'm like, I think I should watch Ozark. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It, it, and all uh, TV friends, if you haven't started yet, Netflix, you, it's one of the best shows within the last few years. And I, the, Laura, it is so perfectly acted and casted and shot. And, and I don't normally, this isn't my genre. This isn't my jam. Mm-hmm. This is, I, I'm so excited. Like, I know what, I'm going to be binging this uh, on Sunday, but you can see Ozark on Netflix. Kendall, we have more hot dish, right? Yes, we do. And it's disappointing news for Adele fans. We're hoping to see her at her Vegas residency last night on the gram. She announced they had to push everything back because they just weren't ready. Here's her tearful announcement. Hi, uh, um, listen, I'm so sorry, but um, my show ain't ready. We've tried absolutely everything that we can to put it together in time and for it to be good enough for you, but we've been absolutely destroyed by delivery delays and COVID. Half my crew, half my team are down with COVID, they still are. And it's been impossible to finish the show. And I can't give you what I have right now. Um, And I'm gutted, I'm gutted and I'm sorry it's so last minute. We've been awake for over 30 hours now trying to figure it out and We've run out of time and I'm so upset and I'm really embarrassed and I'm so sorry to everyone that's traveled again. <sighs> now, if you didn't know, the show was set to kick off tonight at Caesars Palace and run through April 16th. The show eventually will be rescheduled and one, I think it's great that Adele was really sincere and heartfelt and told her fans straight up herself. Nobody else did it for her. But two, Jason, we know she's she's kind of a perfectionist. She's been known to stop a song in the middle and be like, this isn't right. I want to do this right for my fans. Yeah, I mean, there's a, I feel bad. Look, obviously, I'll, I'll start with this. I feel bad for the folks that are, you know, literally are traveling to Vegas today. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully their hotels and, and airlines will work with them. Um, but you, you can't you, you can't begrudge Adele. I was reading, never read the comments. I was reading some comments on, on that and people are just awful. And they were, some of them were really going after Adele. And I thought to myself, why would you, why in the world would you think she would want to do this? Why would you think that she wouldn't want to put on a show? I take it as a great compliment to her fans. She knows how much everyone's spending they're spending hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to go see her. She wants to put on a great show. And and her business, like every other business, has been affected by COVID. Staffing shortages, equipment shortage. It's, it's not an excuse. I'm sure, I'm sure that if she could put on a show tonight, a show that's worthy of the, the ticket money people are spending, she would do it. You know, anecdotally, we heard from our friend Phil uh, who was going to, um, uh, one of our, uh, Phil Jones, who was going to be there, I think, this week or something, and he did. He said he called Delta. Uh, Delta worked with them. You know, Delta's been pretty good during the pandemic with no change fees, and he called his hotel the Flamingo, and they work with them. So I hope that's a case for a lot of folks because it is a lot of money. So I, I feel bad for both sides on this. Mm-hmm. We- okay, we'll get back to Kendall in just a little bit. But first, we're going to get a little help from the hot with the hot dish all the way from Hollywood. Please give it up for our friend Jacob from TMZ. Hi, Jacob. Good to see you. Good to see you. First up, we have a little, wow, Brittany's been in the news basically every day this month, uh, this year. What's the latest? Meatloaf. Well, I'm so- sorry, we're going to start with Meatloaf. I'm sorry. Meatloaf first, then we'll get to Brittany. Okay. So, so yeah, some, some sad news. Uh, the beloved rock singer Meatloaf passed away last night due to COVID. Uh, this was very sudden. Meatloaf w- has been working on a brand new show and was supposed to have a dinner meeting about the show earlier this week and just suddenly came down with COVID and things uh, took, took a stark turn because he got sick really quickly to the point where he was put in critical condition and, uh, as I said, passed away last night. Um, it's unclear whether or not Meatloaf was vaccinated. Uh, he has been outspoken ab- about the uh, vaccine mandates in Australia, so that's something we're waiting to see. 
but he passed away. He was surrounded with his wife and his children around him. And more so than anything, he's going to go down as one of the greatest rock singers of all time, having tons of albums and singles that sold millions of copies. So just a really sad situation. Yeah, his debut album is still one of the top selling albums of, uh, of all time. And I just, you know, and, and I have to apologize. I'm a little out of sorts. Uh, you know, we, we're so much lost. We had Betty White and Meatloaf, and then we just found out about our friend Louie. So I apologize, yeah. scrambling up those stories. Let's lighten it up just a tad. Uh, now we'll get to Britney Spears. What do you have, Jacob? Well, well, you know, I wish I could lighten it up, but I mean, her, Britney and her sister, Jamie Lynn Spears, are still going head to head. But what we've learned is that Jamie Lynn Spears extended an olive branch to Britney back in the day. She went on the Call Her Daddy podcast and explained that some time ago, Britney and her had a conversation when they were in Hawaii where Britney made it seem like she wanted to get out of the conservatorship and that's when Jamie Lynn stepped in. She had a couple of judges look over Britney's conservatorship and said, listen, if Britney is able to just leave California for six months, she's out of this conservatorship. So with that in mind, Jamie offered Britney to stay at her place in Louisiana, but Britney never took her up on it, which she's confused by. But ultimately, these two have been going head to head now for the past few days as, as uh, Jamie has come out with her new memoir and uh, has said some scathing things about Britney Spears. So it doesn't seem like reconciliation is going to be anytime soon between these two. No. And I, I reading some of those posts, Jacob, I thought, thought to myself, I don't think we should be reading this. I think they say it to each other. Don't 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 uh, do this over in the Internet. Anyway, now we can officially totally lighten the mood. Tell the <laughs> folks about an update on that Wheel of Fortune contestant. Yeah. So for those who haven't seen this, there was a, a great episode or somewhat of a great episode, sad episode on Monday where uh, Charlene Rubish, she, as you can see here, she was trying to solve the puzzle and uh, did not get it right. The answer was choosing the right word. She said choosing the right card and ended up not winning herself an Audi Q3, which is an amazing car. And uh, uh, fortunately for her, despite not winning on Wheel of Fortune, there was a local Audi dealership in Nevada, which stepped up and decided to gift her the card anyway. So the car anyway. So so she's not walking home empty handed. She has an incredible car on her hands. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I feel like those slip ups are so natural on a show like Wheel of Fortune. They're bound to happen every now and then. So I'm happy she, she's going home with a brand new car. I am a happy. Finally, Jacob, we end with a we end with yeah. a good one. I appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Oh, got to have that car. Oh. Love it. I know. I'm happy for her. I'm Me happy because we all felt that I get rules of rules, especially with game shows. Yes. Y'all don't want, you know, they don't want to be sued, but that, that's a good ending. And if I, please, and it's, uh, please, Audi, that you've, you got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of free publicity. They, you know, anyway, right. we're going to toss it back to Kendall for some more hot dish. What do you got, Kendall? Well, the Super Bowl is just three weeks away, and the official sponsor of the halftime show, Pepsi, just dropped a trailer. song all day that's dr dre snoop dogg eminem mary j blige hello man you look so good and kendrick lamar they'll all perform at sofi stadium in la super bowl 56 is sunday february 16th uh did you see miss mary j blige come out of that vehicle on my lanta uh, yes i did that teaser video kendall is probably going to be longer than the performance itself <laughs> Seriously, I'm serious. I know, I know. I love all of those people. I love that they did it to the song that they did because, I mean, that's just an old school classic. And, of course, it's about L.A. and the city that never sleeps. So it should be a pretty good performance, even if it is a wee bit short, like you said. Yeah, and it's a lot of people, huh? Anyway, I'm excited. I'll be watching. Kendall's going to join, uh, come back in just a little bit. But next, 
Uh, a trailblazing movie is turning a lot of heads on Apple TV+. Plus. It's called Coda. Why is it turning a lot of heads? Well, first, it's getting Oscar buzz already, and it features a predominantly deaf cast. Here's a little clip. Take a look. Please welcome to the show, Amelia Jones and Oscar winner, Marley Matlin. Good morning. Good morning. Sir. Marley, I want to. Thank you so I, much for having us. <laughs> you are very welcome. Marley, I want to start with you. I'm going to get the, the, the typical question out of the way. I, uh, our crew, members of the crew saw this, th thought it was fantastic. What, tell the folks what exactly CODA is all about, what it stands for, too. Oh, hello, Minneapolis, by the way. Hello, hello, hello. Um, uh, Coda is about a family of four people, three whom are deaf and one who's hearing, and they're going about their daily lives as a working class fishing family, and they love their family life. And then suddenly changes when their daughter, uh, which is a Coda, a child, a deaf adult, says that, uh, played by Amelia, and she plays the character of Ruby, she wants to tell us her dream, and her dream is to be a singer. And Amelia, tell me a little bit about Ruby. Who is she? Where where do we find her when the movie starts? So Ruby, as Marley said, is a coda, which stands for child of deaf adults. And she's kind of at that moment in life where you have to separate from the people you love and kind of create an identity apart from them. And uh, she's discovered this love for singing and she, is kind of battling herself um, between staying with her family because they need her because she's a coda, but also they're such a close family and she loves her family and wants to stay with them, but also wants to pursue her dream. So it's a coming of age story. And Ruby was a, a very, very cool character to be able to play lots of layers and, and yeah, lots of skills to learn, which I was grateful for. Marley, what was, I was wondering what your reaction was when you kind of heard the pitch, you got the script, you heard the, you know, you, you got the pitch from, from the executives that this was going to be a project that would feature, uh, which I think is so fantastic, a predominantly deaf cast. What was your initial reaction? Uh, when I saw the script, I was elated. I mean, I had never seen a script that featured three deaf characters so prominently, even just deaf characters in general since Children of a Lesser God. I mean, here is a story involving deaf deaf people. Uh, I think it's about time that we've told this story now about a family, families that are just like everybody else. And it's one of a million stories about deaf families that need to be told and that people can identify with. I was just so thrilled when I read the script. I was thrilled about the challenges of this character that I was going to be playing as, for, as well as for everybody else. Amelia, and for you, uh, playing off uh, one of the greats, uh, Marley, what was it? I always like I always like hearing about day one on a set when 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 actors come together. Uh, we have about a minute left. Take me to that first day when you when you got to work with with Marley. What was that chemistry like? I can't possibly explain how much I love Marley in a minute, but I'm going to try. Uh, I first met Marley at a rehearsal <laughs> and we had some time to rehearse and she immediately kind of became a mum. She was so warm, so kind, took me under her wing and I'm so grateful for her. I admire her as an actress, but also as a person and I really, really look up, look up to her and I'm so, so, so happy that not only I got to work with her, but she's now in my life forever. Well, you did it. You did it in under a minute, Amelia. That was fantastic. Amelia, Marley. Thank you so much. And I can't tell people enough to go watch this. Thank you so very much.
and Coda is available right now. Here's the good news on Apple TV+. Plus. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back right after this. Back in a moment. Welcome back, everybody. And it's- welcome back, everyone. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was just reading the prompter. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I know. I asked, no, Kendall. I asked Ted in the commercial. I go, is Kendall bringing us back from commercial? Am I? Because, you know, Ted's fault. We, we're just doing the best we can, right, Kendall? We're trying, and it's all Ted's fault. Mm hmm. I like that. Hashtag blame Ted. Yeah, I like that. No, but all kidding aside, (laughs) I'm going to toss it to my dear friend who we have even more. We have leftovers, right, Kendall? That's right. Roll it, Leo. I just, this graphic is so weird to me. It's got hairy arms. Anyway, the hot dish was so good and plentiful. Those are our leftovers. Sex and the City star Cynthia Nixon is opening up about her co-star Chris Knopf getting scrubbed off the final and just like that. Now, the show's writer said Chris had been making a cameo in the finale at originally, but that was scrapped after, of course, those sexual assault allegations came out against him. Cynthia said she's proud of the show and they were very lucky to be able to make those changes. Chris has denied the allegations and he has been dropped by his agency and the CBS show he's on, The Equalizer. Um, this is a this is a sticky one, but Cynthia has now said her piece. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what you do say. I mean, if you're if, if I, I I can understand where both Cynthia and and S J and uh, and Kristen Davis are coming from. You know, uh, they have a show to promote. They have, and more than important, more importantly than that, they have to do the right thing. So I get it. Um, you know, there was a new episode that dropped yesterday. That controversy aside. It's it's in fashion now to kind of hate on that on on the series. Look, it's not perfect. I think it's really preachy. I think they're trying to do too many things. Uh, but I will say, having a little a little positivity, um, it takes any show a while to find its groove. This last episode last night, Kendall, I will tell you, probably one of my favorites. It's finding its rhythm. There are still a couple eye roll inducing moments. But um, I'm, I'm going to give it time. I mean, I'm going to watch the whole season and then kind of judge it. I plan on sitting on my couch in the warmth of my house and doing the same thing this weekend. Hey, next in the dish, it may be January, but it's never too early to start thinking about Christmas, right? <laughs> A sequel for the 1983 movie, A Christmas Story is in the works, and former child star right there, Peter Billingsley, is in talks to return. It's titled A Christmas Story Christmas. <laughs> it's slated for HBO Max, by the way. A Christmas Story Christmas. How original. It will be uh, 30 years later and follow as Ralphie returns to his house in Cleveland Street to deliver his kids a magical Christmas like the one he had growing up. Production will begin next month in Hungary. Hungary? Okay, American Christmas in Hungary. Uh, is this one of those shows, Jason, that you think we could go and do again 30 years later that they should just not touch it? TBD, dear friend. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know. Is it beloved? Yes. It's a modern day classic. You know, it runs every hour on Christmas Day on, I think, TBS or something. I, I don't know if this is one of those untouchable ones. Um, I think you could do it. I, I think if the script is good, um, and I used to said some of the original cast is coming back, it can be done. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things, like, I don't want to see, I, I say this all the time, I don't want to see the Goonies. I don't want to see adult Goonies. I'm, I'm the age of, you know, I don't want to see us, you know, going around going, ooh. Can we sit down for a second and make buy, you know, <laughs> noises as we sit down in the chair? You know, I don't want to see the Goonies doing that. And I, so I don't know if I want to see 40, this 46 year old kid. I don't know. TBD. It could be, it could be, it could be fine. I'll use that word. It could be fine. Oh, so Minnesotan of you. It could be fine. I don't know. Hmm. Hey, Jason, you told us about your snorkeling adventure on Wednesday. Uh, you also tried something else in Orlando during your time off that was also um, adventure defined and got you a little out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So, I, you know, I talk about Disney uh, all the time to the speaking of eye rolls, but don't turn the dial. I think we have some video. I re- uh, rode the brand new roller coaster at Universal called. You're looking at it now. 
the VelociCoaster. Look at this thing, Kendall. Oh. Uh, it has yeah. several inversions. There's one of the inversions right there where you're literally right over the water, as you can see. Um, they call the top of any roller coaster the top hat. I just learned that. See the very top right there, Kendall? Uh, uh -huh. This one is history making because that right there is 150 feet in the air. <laughs> and it has two kind of launches. One launch at the very beginning takes you from zero to 50 in about two seconds. And then mid ride, there is another launch, which then propels you to 70 miles an hour. 70, Kendall. Um, <laughs> no. It is, look, I still like, there's another roller coaster there, um, uh, Hagrid's motorbike. I still like that one a little bit better, but this one is way different. Uh, it is, you feel weightlessness at a moment when one of the inversions, you kind of fall out of your seat. And the last thing I'll say, there is no harness this way. <gasps> there is only a lap bar. There no. is only a lap bar, which when I saw that, you know how I am about heights. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, no, but I did it. I did it. And the other thing, I forgot, it's way back there. I'm going to go run and get it. So okay. remember hearing, I know you guys showed the video. Are you wearing slippers, You guys showed the video Jason? of the people waiting. No, I'm wearing sandals, Kendall. <laughs> so you saw the people waiting eight hours for that popcorn bucket at Epcot Center at Walt Disney World. Well, uh, back in October for the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World, remember hearing about those Starbucks cups? Yes. That people were, like, beating each other over the head for? <gasps> I got, I got one of the new ones. This is like the second version with a different color scheme. And Starbucks learned, you do not even want to know. You don't even want to know how much I paid for a plastic cup. But yes, I, I did do. it for the show. Not really, I did it for myself. But Wait. take a guess and then we'll go to break. How much do you think? <sighs> how much? Jason, tell me you did not pay $50 for a plastic cup. Oh my God. Jason, <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. I need to digest this. <laughs> and welcome back. Woo. Well, I, I know a lot of you and I love it. It makes me it makes me happy that a lot of you depend on our show to tell you some good things to watch this weekend. And if you're going to stay inside, because it is going to be a little cold, uh, I have a great documentary that was recommended to me uh, by our by our producer. And, and obviously, because I've been isolating this week, um, I've had a lot of time. It's called Beanie Mania on HBO Max. And it is what you think it is. It is a documentary about the Beanie Baby craze. We're going to take a look at the trailer and talk about it on the other side. Look at this. Time Warner is like the Wizard of Oz. Not many people knew the person. He knew how to market his beanies. He knew how to get those emotions going. I would have paid whatever it took to get that beanie baby at the time. We called every shop over the United States. This was becoming something different. That's when the internet came around. <laughs> Things got out of control. There were people out there who were buying the beanies, and this was their livelihood. The prices were an up. 350. An up. 450. An up. $900. Unbelievable. Unbelievable is what I kept saying while I was watching Beanie Mania. Uh, it is fascinating. Even if you lived through it like I did. I remember, I, I was not... I didn't get on the beanie bandwagon. I mean, obviously I collect a lot of things, you know, but I didn't, I never got into the beanie craze. What you learn is that this whole thing remarkably started in a suburb in Chicago. It wasn't a marketing ploy. It wasn't even meant to ever be what it became, but a group of women in Chicago started collecting them. And this was at the beginning stages of the internet too. So it wasn't even like, it, it, the, the, the buzz could spread over social media, but it started with these women who started uh, collecting and trading the entire collection and calling gift shops because, you know, they were never available in big stores. That was another thing that you learned. But they kept calling local gift shops, you know, in Schaumburg, Illinois, and all of these areas. Um, uh, and, and I didn't know that. 
And it started with them, like five women, Kendall. And then it just exploded from there. Then the media picked up on this story. Then the national media picked up on this story. And then that's really when it took off. And one of the smart business moves that they made early on was uh, the, the creator, Ty, decided, I'm going to start retiring some of these beanies. They're going to stop selling them. And then that's when the craze uh, hit just kind of warp speed. It is fascinating. It is funny as all get out because you're thinking you, 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 you see how invested these women in the country were. Magazines were started. TV shows were done. And one of the women, we're going to show you a clip here. I literally was like this. I was laughing so hard. A woman wrote, are you ready, mm -hmm. Kendall? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She wrote a rap song about Beanie Babies. Let me tell you a story about a guy named Tice who's equated these bees that make me hot. Beanie rap. It's a beanie rap. It's a beanie rap. I, I think we should just actually end the show right now. There's nothing over the next 18 minutes will be better than beanie rap. A beanie rap. Kendall, what? Look at your face. Oh, are you dancing? Okay, good. <laughs> uh huh. I'm like this woman's yeah. so straight faced, and she's rapping, rapping about Beanie Babies. I can't. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, like in our own universe. Did you? Did you, we got to go? But did you collect Beanie Babies? We didn't collect them. We we liked them, but I remember my mom being not one of those people that was like, you can't damage the tag. She was like, whatever, just play with them. <laughs> yeah. Edit, our editor, Rob King, mm -hmm. he was, they, they, the whole family collected him. He made his son get like four jobs. He was like, get out, you gotta work at Dairy Queen, you gotta work at Shakey's, you gotta work at Subway. Then he made Sean get a fourth job. Mm -hmm. I'm just joking. But no, he's the only one that I knew that was obsessed with it. I, I love it. Beanie Mania is available on HBO Max. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back right after this, back in a moment. Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. We do it our own way. Sing it up, Let's make it a good day. Every day, every day. Oh, no matter what they say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Moving into your weekend, y'all. Welcome back to the show. Jason can enjoy this again in just a few minutes. It's not wedding season yet, well, for most of us, but it's definitely wedding planning season. A young Minnesota designer is making a name for himself in the bridal world, and I got a chance to visit Ivory Bridal Company and talk to him about the trends for the new year and so much more. Last time we were together, so about last February, we were at Flutter, and you kind of were like, oh, there's some things in the works. Was this, this one of the things in the works? This is the thing that was in the works, and I just didn't know how I was going to do it. We um, were trying to find a new space for my first store that I had, and Flutter was my second. Mm -hmm. So, uh, kind of always had our pretty, like, little sister store and Diamond Bride. Mm -hmm. And Diamond Bride is where I got my start yeah. uh, in business ownership and design, but I needed, like, a like a inspirational, safe place. I went a little crazy when we went furniture shopping and when we picked out all the details for the store, and. Did most of it myself with the help of my team, and um, everybody that walks in here loves the like the juxtaposition from like the white to the black, mm -hmm. and you know, you're so used to seeing like bright white, yes. very feminine, light and airy, and I wanted something really moody and kind of sexy, and um, so far the response has been pretty good. My sister got her dress here. It was actually one of the designs, and we had so much fun just mm -hmm. being here. And that was one thing we said was that it just felt like a different vibe than everywhere else. But we are so chill and uh, we have like back by our bathrooms like a really cool neon sign that's like I love the lip sign. smoking cigarettes. Like everybody's <laughs> like what is that about? I'm like while the store is very classy and smart looking we have to have a little bit of like trash and sass. Feel like you're in a beautiful home and try on beautiful dresses and party while you're here. That's kind of the point. Guess we have to get to dresses, shall we? Yes, yes, we will okay. go over that. Okay. Three different ideas for different kinds of brides. First step. You can never go wrong with a clean and simple A-line dress. Fits so. everybody, fits everybody tight, and 
super light. Oh my gosh! Yes. And you smell like a princess. What's this material called again? Mikado. This is a Mikado. So it used to always just be lace, chiffon, or satin. And now you have so, well, there's so many different varieties of fabrics. And this looks like satin. It wears like satin, but it's so much lighter weight. You can't go wrong. Cool, Wait. clean and simple. Oh, Little pictures will last forever in this dress for sure. It's beautiful. Okay, then we have like the complete opposite. Complete of like opposite. Simple. <laughs> really big. So this is Gemini. And what makes this so great is that after your wedding ceremony, oh wait, it just <laughs> you get to party in the other personality. Oh my gosh! Stop! And these are the little like you can wear my sleeves. Mm -hmm. Oh my word, this is this is like a thing, taking off part of your dress. Having two looks. One thing about this dress that is trending though that I think has become very, very popular is the corset in this bodice. Mm -hmm. There's people love to be comfortable. You don't want to wear your bra and your Spanx and all your stuff or anything like right. that under your gown anymore if you don't have to. We have a full broken bra into this, so when we order your size, we measure you up and make sure that everything fits in stuff. But there's something that you brought out that I've seen a little talk online, and it is a thing. Back in black. And people are doing it for their weddings these days. It's so beautiful. You just get to do whatever you want anymore, right? I feel like in bridal, and this is definitely the definition of kind of doing whatever you want. It's not always like, oh, it's so rebellious. And I'm like, no, it's really just it's beautiful. I really look good in black. Moral of the story, ladies. Do what you want. Do, do what you want. Everybody just do what you want. Even Eric, who forgot to turn on our microphones at the end of that shot. Just do what you want. <laughs> he told me I could make fun of him. Uh, thank you to Colby John and the whole team there at Ivory Bridal. Head to their website, ivorybridalco.com or check them out on Instagram at ivorybridalco for all of those tips and to see those dresses yourself. They're really pretty. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs> And welcome back to the Jason Show, my friends. Thank you for putting up with us this week. I'm so, I'll hopefully be back in the studio on Monday. I feel great and I can't wait. I'm gonna toss it back to my friend Kendall because what's it time for, Kendall? It's time for the world's shortest segment. All right, most of us use spray to clean our breath or our glasses, stuff like that, but not Charles Barkley. Yeah, he was caught licking his lenses before wiping his glasses with the cloth while on TNT is inside the NBA. Oh my word, his co-anchor is all groaned in disgust, um, as would I if Jason started doing that from across the way. I've done that once. I'm sorry. Go to break. Go to break. Go to break. And welcome back. Wrapping things up for today and for this week. And I'm going to toss it over to Kendall because it is time for what, Kendall? The surprise goodbye. As you know, we have no idea what's in the story until right meow. Today, a house in Milwaukee you honestly won't believe. It was for sale on Zillow. Now, come back to the TV, check it out. Oh my gosh. Okay. This house is a communal bathroom with four toilets next to each other. Look at this. Wow, at least the artwork is pretty. No walls or dividers between the toilets. The house is 170 years old and was used by Girl Scouts of America. Does that mean it doesn't need bathroom dividers? Uh, they added the unusual bathroom, which includes four sinks as well. The house actually just sold for $450,000. I mean, I don't really understand why the Girl Scouts, Jason, are like, why that has anything to do with not needing privacy when you're trying to tinkle. No. 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 Okay. I need to wipe that from my mind. I have the perfect way to end the show. Would you like to see the cutest thing you'll see all day? Are you ready? Yes. Oh, the boys are cuddling on the couch. Oh, look at that. Look at them basking in the sunlight. Dexter. Dexter. Watch, he won't move. Dexter. 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 Does, does he respond to treats? Dexter. Hungry? Mr. Big. Hello? 
Mr. Big. Squirrel? Mr. Big. <laughs> That's my life. <laughs> Nobody my listens life. to you. That's my life, Kendall. Nobody. Nobody listens to you. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. No, no, no one does. Why would you? That's going to do it for us this week. Again, thanks to Kendall and the whole team for holding down the fort. And thanks to you. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you're doing it wrong. And to Louie Anderson, we love you, buddy. We'll see you Monday. <laughs>